guys, look at what I found. Some corn that's as tall as I am in the middle of June. What do you think? It's not starting to tassel yet, so it has a lot of potential to keep growing. To be fair, I am sitting down, so it should grow cr quite a bit yet. Anyway, in all seriousness though, we're running that again. We're cultivating one more time. So this is the same field I started on the other day. Our first field that we planted, that was about two weeks ago. That first video I did. Now I'm running a different cultivator here. So it's a gray cultivator, Henniker, I think the brand is. That's what what it looks like as the two gauge wheels up front this back here that we call a frog is a piece in the middle or center piece whatever that holds on two of these blades one blade on each side and this is attached back here to throw more dirt into the row let me show you here kind of what we're doing as you can see the furrow is laid out like that because we're throwing a lot of dirt into the corn in between the row to try and cover up as much weeds as we can although this field has been pretty clean the whole time I think that's why this kind of got pushed back a little bit we have some weedier fields that we had to attend before this one. But yeah, it looks like this will probably be the last pass for this season with the cultivator. And unless I'm finding some weedier spots than this, we will not need to use the burner in here, which is great. So yeah, there you can kind of see of how tall the corn actually is. It's just starting to hit the axle right there. So, I mean, we could potentially get in here maybe two, three more days, depending on how fast it grows. But it is towards the, the end with the cultivator anyway. So, here's the tractor cab view. As you can see, that corn's just about to hit the bar. I mean, it can hit the bar a little bit, but once it starts hitting pretty good, we don't like to go in anymore. And also, we're able to go a lot faster now. Seven and a half mile an hour, 53 acres an hour. So, it's going a lot faster than the first pass, that's for sure. Also, once the corn starts to close the row like that, as you can see it's creating a lot of shade and the sun cannot get down to the dirt as much and in a week or so it's, it's going to be completely closed. By then it's much less likely that uh, weeds will germinate and start growing. So even though we can't get into with the cultivator anymore, that'll keep the weed pressure down quite a bit. Although some weeds can still grow and will, but not nearly as much. Well, how's it going, guys? We're still cultivating. Jacob was running the, that single sweep Henniker, and we we are still running, still running the old three sweep John Deere one. So this corn's obviously not quite as tall as you can see. It's not quite as tall as me, like Jacob showed you guys, but it's definitely getting uh, definitely getting up there. And for this cultivator, this field will be about, I mean, perfect. You can see there's not a bunch of weeds. But all the weeds that are growing, this grass here, it's all pretty small, which means that I can go fast enough and deep enough to cover them up and rip them out. 
So like this one right here will obviously be, well, it's gonna get hand weeded by me, but this weed will get ripped out by that in the middle of the row. And then like all, all these little baby ones here in the row will get covered up and knocked over by the dirt being thrown from that. And I know he mentioned a little bit about when it canopies over, especially in corn and beans, where we grow, uh, the weeds don't grow as fast. So right now this field I'm in has been cultivated twice or once and I'm going over it for the third time and then it was tine weeded twice with the tines taken out and then also blind tine weeded. So this would be the sixth pass on this field. We'll probably only get one more with the cultivator since Jacob showed you guys once the corn starts hitting the bar of the cultivator we can't really do anything without damaging it. I mean we can and will flame it if it needs to be if the weed pressure gets really bad but I don't think that'll be an issue on this field just judging how clean the end rows are and that's a pretty telltale sign of uh, what the field will look like. If the end rows are bad more than likely the field ain't going to be perfect but uh, if the end rows are pretty clean I have high hopes for the rest of the field. Anyway I won't bore you guys with another video of me just running this over and over. Um, I'll talk to you guys when I get back to the farm tonight. I think possibly there's some interesting shop work going on. I'm not going to tell you because probably the next clip you'll see will be that. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're working on the stages of corn. It is Tuesday the 13th of June. So uh, the corn's getting pretty tall in some areas, but some corn, I mean, we're just time weeding. So we have a very spread out planting. I mean, it was about a month where all we did was plant, we planted corn, then soybeans, but the last soybeans got planted on June 2nd, I believe, something around there, and the last corn was probably third or fourth week in May. So the corn heights and growth stages are very different, so we're doing pretty much every single form of weed control that, we're, that we do. We're, I don't think we're rotary hoeing, but we're tying weeding, we're cultivating, we're using, I think, two different types of cultivators so far, and we'll probably hook up some more single sweeps here pretty soon. But just a little update on what we're doing and the uh, types of weed control that we're doing. All right, boys, just finished up for the day. I'm gonna quick walk around my cultivator, make sure all the shovels are fine, not super worn down, one thing, or multiple things, these obviously wear down quite a bit, especially in the track rows where there's the most compaction. So you really have to watch those, especially the big blades in the back, which dig really deep. Um, just make sure they're not getting worn down enough or worn down too much. Otherwise, what's, what's the point? You're just gonna be dragging. I mean, they can get worn down enough that they just kind of just fall apart. So I'm just kind of making sure nothing's too, too worn down. Like you can see this one right here. I'm gonna change this in the morning. I mean, I'll quick turn the camera around. Like you can see, that's that's super worn down. And these are just like knock-ons. So I'm probably gonna change that one in the morning. And the other track row could probably also get changed. So I'm probably gonna bring two, two new sweeps for that in the morning. Otherwise, very, very productive day killing weeds. I mean, we knocked out, I probably knocked out, uh, I don't know, 300 some acres give or take pretty productive day killing weeds it's pretty much prime time we got quite a bit of rain this weekend um, in this area probably half inch give or take so the weeds obviously grew fast but the corn grew quicker than the weeds so hitting them right now knocking those weeds back while the corn is growing this fast i mean it's just perfect because then the corn obviously propels further and the weeds get knocked back because you're cultivating and uh hopefully if it keeps up with this growth rate, the corn will be canopied in hopefully a week, and then we won't have to worry about it. Especially on these pretty clean fields, it'll be ideal. Because if they're clean right now, and they're growing this fast, then uh, when they canopy over, the weeds will be so far behind that it won't matter. So that's kind of what we're looking for and why getting a lot done right now is very very good also a very big pet peeve of mine you can see it's not completely empty 
but it's it's getting down there and it's not like i'm driving 108 miles but if it was my pickup it, it would not even be like a quarter i usually just fill my tank up a because you never know what's gonna happen once you leave your house in the morning where you'll be going you just never know and if something did happen like an emergency somewhere where i had to drive a ways it, it'd be a lot better <laughs> to not have to stop and get fuel. So, not a big deal, but I, I don't like things that don't have very much fuel in them, and especially pickups. Because believe it or not, we've had times on our farm <laughs> where a pickup ran out of fuel, and it was, uh, it was an interesting day. I'll maybe tell you guys that story sometime. Comment if you wanna hear about it. It's, a, it's pretty funny, actually. Just made it back to the farm. I'm gonna put the fuel, going in the fuel trailer back there. Cause in the morning, we gotta take some fuel to some tractors. One of our, <laughs> I don't know, Joel, if you watch our videos, ran for an hour on one bar, tying weed in some soybeans. <laughs> so, at least we know now. Well, I'm glad he was the one to do it because once I get to like five bars left, I'm like calling people, trying to figure out how to get fuel. But when I, I called him and said, hey, I'll come pick you up, you know, in a little bit. And uh, he's like, yeah, I got one bar of fuel, so I'm gonna need fuel in the morning. So if anyone out there runs a 8310 RT John Deere tractor, and you're only running about 1100 RPMs, and you get to one bar of fuel, you can still go. Probably, if I were you, I wouldn't do it, but you, you sure can. Also, look at that. What's that? Anyway, I'm gonna get this pickup fueled up, fuel trailer going, and uh, we'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, puppies. Kevin says to like and subscribe. Well, hey there, guys. Just got to the tractor cab. You just put some fuel in it. I took off some of the sweeps that I needed to change, so uh, we're going to put these back on here. I didn't save any of the old ones, but here's what the new ones look like. I said last night, these do get worn down pretty fast, especially if they're digging deep. So that these new ones, they're just knock-ons. So it's just a spring, and then it goes and it clicks, I don't know if you can see my finger, in that hole, and that's how it stays in there. So you just go like that, and you got a brand new sweep. And I think I only needed to change four, so this will be relatively, relatively quick. And then we can start going. We're gonna finish up this field of corn, do one more quarter to the south, and then we're actually gonna go unhook this cultivator, hook back on a tine weeder, and go tine weed for the 56th time this year. But yeah, I wanna thank you guys for watching today's video. I'll probably just pick up where this video left off once I start unhooking this cultivator and we can uh, go tine, white, tine weed some organic soybeans together. But until then, we'll catch you in the next one. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment on what you want to see next on our, on our farm.